Thank you, Brian and Aaron, from the screen. Hello, everyone. Nielsen is speaking about last night's Oscar presentation on ABC, and it's not looking good. Preliminary results down from last year in viewership and maybe the lowest-rated Oscar telecast since 2009. More details from then later, and we'll talk more about the Oscars in a moment. Now, one of my favorite seasons begins this week, Upfront Showcase Season. For the next three months, the major television networks and digital services hold events here in New York to show off what they're up to this summer, this fall, and beyond. This season used to be for advertisers only, inviting them to commit money ahead of or up front of when their new shows take off. Now that journalists like yours truly attend these events, you out there get to know when the advertisers do. And in the process, you get to know the direction these channels will go from here. Nickelodeon kicks off the season Wednesday afternoon. You can look for a mix of new animated and live action series, mostly for the funny, including the long-awaited adaptation of the popular Jack Black film School of Rock. That premieres on March 12th. TV Land, which brought Younger with Sutton Ford during the Jim Gaffigan show to Successful Life, originating from Brooklyn and the other boroughs last year, will unveil more original comedies, including a new George Lopez sitcom at its joint presentation with Nick at Night and CMT on Thursday. And before the end of March, we'll get future peaks from the National Geographic Channel, Scripps Networks, which runs Home and Garden Television, Food Network, among other services, and Discovery Communications, which will have a lot to say about the new Oprah Winfrey Network dramas, Graceland, which premieres in May, and Queen Sugar from Selma director Ava DuVernay. Keep in mind that some notable networks have not determined their upfront plans yet. Other networks in last year will decide soon to stay in or move off this stage. Now, of course, we'll be tracking what these services and others present throughout the next three months right here on BK Live and on Tomorrow Be Televised. Plus, I'll critique these showcases at MediaVillage.com, the popular website devoted to media commentary. Well, we're moving into March starting tomorrow, and Sundance Television begins the month with its first new series of 2016, Hap. And Leonard. Let's describe this as a crime noir and swampland take on Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, circa 1980s. Our two leads, opposite tractors they can be, are played by James Purifoy and Michael K. Williams. Let's watch them in action. Come on, man. That's why dudes don't hug each other. <laughs> Get the radio on again. Just try. Those aren't cheap. And you can take a man's job, but you can't take his cookies. There's a million dollars at the bottom of that river. We gotta shoot somebody. Here comes trouble. Hey, Hap. We're gonna take from the rich to help the people that need it. Ow. My girlfriend just loves kitties. Nobody tell me I was gonna be on a redneck safari. The guns came out. This is war! And all hell broke loose. You ready? Do I look ready? Hap and Leonard, an all-new series, premieres March 2nd to 10 on Sundance TV. Sundance tells us Happen Leonard will be accompanied on their adventures by one femme fatale, a crew of washed up revolutionaries, a pair of murderous psycho killers, some lost loot and the fuzz and those million bad ideas. Their words, not ours. This thick episode tale, based on the popular novels by Joe Lansdale, debuts Wednesday night. Co-executive producers Jim Mickle and Nick DiMacci, who also wrote and direct various episodes, join me this afternoon on Tomorrow Be Televised, 3 o'clock on Blog Talk Radio. We'll also have former ESPN Sports Center anchor person Dan Debenham, who is now an entrepreneur with his own production company doing relevant of Race, a new series which started last night on BYU TV, the national network from Brigham Young University. Call it an amazing race where genealogy and travel collide. And Brian and Aaron, starting with the Oscar talk, Chris Rock was fantastic last night. I thought his monologue was spot on, one of the best in recent years. And the only beef I have with that and the show itself is if you're going to talk diversity and lack of it in film and television, you go beyond African Americans. You talk Latinos, you talk Asian Americans, you talk Native Americans. And with the exception of that crazy bit with the uh, kids, the Asian kids, as accountants, which I thought did not come off well. Uh, I just wish that uh, the show would have done more to really showcase diversity or the lack of diversity as a whole. 
I concur. I agree. I, but I do think that one of the big winners last night were the Girl Scouts of America. Absolutely. I mean, selling like 68,000 worth, uh, dollars worth of cookies, really, really tremendous. Big loser to me, I thought, was ABC and the Academy because they started this show at 8.30 rather than 8 o'clock, and they continue to shoot themselves in the foot because, unlike every other award show out of Los Angeles, the Emmys, the Grammys, here in New York, the Tonys, where you start the show at 8 o'clock and yeah. you have a good chance to get off at 11, these folks still go 8.30. We do not need an extra half hour of red carpet treatment. You You've got the hour before on ABC, the two hours on E or Pop or the networks. So start the show at 8 o'clock, and we would have uh, been able to see the best picture with Morgan Freeman announcing the winner of Spotlight at 11.36 rather than right after midnight. So what were the ratings compared to last year? You said they were down. Looks like they're down. Now. We'll get more details later this afternoon, but that is not good news uh, for ABC and for the Academy, which was hoping that because of the controversy, because of Chris Rock and what he did, and a lot of the Twitter buzz, the social media buzz, that they probably might have had a shot to go up. I think probably what canceled that was the fact that once once again, we have a lot of films that did not get big box office, like Spotlight, like The Revenant, like um, uh, Room, yeah. Ex Machina, et cetera, et cetera, that uh, they would have had uh, a higher, that, that factored out the ratings. But you have to give it up, like, a spot on about the diversity thing, but the most diverse thing about it was the talent pool. Most yes. of the diverse yeah. actors were pulled from the world of TV. Like, Kerry Washington hasn't been in a movie in a minute. Priyanka Chopra is a box office goddess mm -hmm. in Bollywood, but she She's on TV Quantico, as well. On Every single sort of colored person who showed up was a TV star. So TV's kicking the movie's butt into diversity. And even Morgan Freeman at the end giving the award to Spotlight, which I thought, by the way, was, was well-deserved. It was, it was truly astonishing that you didn't see a lot of movie stars there. And also, something else I was very surprised at, uh, was the fact that I thought the show could end at 11 o'clock. Yeah, they were yeah. starting to, they really yeah. picked up the pace. I thought it was a great idea to start with the writers first and like build it up in terms of the importance of movies. Yeah. But then they get bogged down with the technical categories, which should be present for the most part, should be presented before the show goes on. I'm talking about sound effects, editing, yeah. uh, know, except for costuming, Fury Road. That was, that was mm -hmm. awesome. Yeah. By the way, some, however, some of the best uh, lines and some of the best presentations, the acceptance speeches, were by people like Documentary Short, doc, film PP Doctor One for Inside Out. And incidentally, there was also inconsistency. The Academy was trying to do that whole thing, the, the crawl at the bottom of the screen, where yeah, they hope yeah, to yeah. try to stop the acceptance speeches or cut them down no by saying, here's what we want to thank. Yeah. And they did it for some people, they didn't do it for others. So, and I also thought Cheryl Boone Isaacs, uh, the head of the Academy of Spartan Sciences, had a great opportunity, and I think she blew it. I thought her really? speech was great. I thought oh. she gave. I think a she great needed speech. to say more. I think she needed to be specific, more specific, and say, "Hey, look, Warner Brothers, Lionsgate, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, do better. Do it across the board, and not just be generic by saying we all have to do our. We do, That's but true. I think it could have been better if she like. Here's where we're going forward. And I know she has to uh, to cater to a lot of different hats in Hollywood. Yeah. And. So sort of, well, like, watch what she says. But I think she well, could have yeah. been on uh, this night when you're going to spoof the whole diversity issue. Uh, get well, out, there, out and, there and say it. Uh, one other thing too, I thought Lady Gaga was fantastic. That was a excuse sensational me. Performance. That was the only <laughs> genuine emotional moment in the whole thing. There were no like surprise, teary, thank I love everybody <laughs> speeches. The only emotional heft was Lady Gaga giving that performance. It was, I was moved. It was the I only was too, thing and that I thought made it was me fantastic. I give credit to whoever staged that number, Glenn Weiss, who directed the number, where it was not just Lady Gaga, but was also all those women coming out dealing Amazing. with sexual harassment and rape in some manner. And yeah. how that song, co-written by Diane Warren and Gaga, did Lost not win, to went a to a uh, James Bond did Spectre he? was like, ridiculous. Give me a break. And not a great James Bond song, by the way, compared to like Adele Skyfall or Shirley yeah. Bassey's Goldfinger or whatever. Uh, also, I thought another uh, unfortunate note was the dance number by Fatima Robinson, who I think will get an Emmy nomination for The Wiz Live. Good choreography, but marred by weekend? bad lighting. The terrible lighting thing with him singing the yeah. worth it thing. Yeah, I like terrible but, uh, lighting. Shout out to uh, what's his name, the boy who shouldn't have won for that horrible song. Um, who thought he was scoring the right uh, thing for gay rights. No, mm -hmm. the fat boy who's skinny now with the eye makeup, Sam Smith, uh, yes. saying oh. about the gay thing. But and he, he and by the way, the a lot of people are Googling and Twitter about that. Uh, he got his facts wrong. He's one yeah. of a few. We can leave it yes. at that. One so, of the things, too, I want to mention as well, uh, the In Memoriam segment. Uh, I thought the Last use of Blackbird wasn't great. Dave Grohl was not much. And take Turner Classic <laughs> Movies Remember segment and just update and put it on. They do a better job, I think, in terms of being inclusive about who passed away, and it's done so well done, melancholy. Just Academy, put that TCM thing on so that we all get a chance to see it. All, all right. right. Well, there you Dave go. Dave Grohl is not much. It's mm -hmm. been, throw the gauntlet down. <laughs>